G'day viewers, how you doing? In this video we're going to learn how to set up and drive the CTC5 cab car. Alright, let's go and jump in. First up, unlock the door and then get to the steps up and we can close our door. I'm vaguely surprised that does that in the driver's cabin, but I suppose this isn't always a driver's cabin, is it? Anyway, let's sit down in the chair. We want to pop in our reverser, and we want to put that to forwards. And we're going to see lots of alerts, because I haven't used this much. And we want to cut the brakes in, apply the independent brake, the holding brake as it's called here, and release the train brake. Now I noticed that the uh, independent brake or holding brake is not actually using the rail driver's independent brake. Up here on the fuse cabinet we want to turn on ATC, Axis and the alerter. So ATC is automatic train control and that stops us driving up the bum of another train and sets our speeds and we have the Axis or Advanced Civil Speed Enforcement System which tells us about curves and bridges and the like, and we have the alerter that wakes us up when we fall asleep. Let's get the uh, window open. Let's pop on our gauge lights. We can open the doors. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can either pop over here and you can use the guards panel and unlock it and so forth. I'm far too lazy for that. I'm going to use my keyboard and I'm pressing the Y key. It's Y and U on the keyboard. It's the left or right key d-pad on your controller all right doors are ready to be locked so we can do that that was pretty quick wasn't it uh, headlights are already on bright and orc so that's fine cab heaters on and in theory we can now just release the holding brake and drive oops i've just used a rail driver accidentally And let's get out of here. So I when I moved the uh, rail driver reverser, <laughs> I accidentally turned the thing off. Don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, and off we go, moving off. So remember with Axis and ATC, you do the lower of the speed limits you can see. So we've got 30 here, which is from Axis. You can just see illuminated there. And we've got 45 here, which is coming from ATC. And we've got, on our HUD, 30. So the lowest of those is 30, that's what we're going to do. We crawl out here through the freight yard, leaving Worcester in the CTC5 cab car. You notice it's fairly silent. Why? Because the locomotive's up the other end. So it's all the way up there, so you're not going to hear a lot from a cab car. coming up on our set speed so I've throttled off we are going downhill so I may need to apply a little bit of brake actually I'll let it go over the speed because I want to show you what to do when you go over speed and the ATC or Axis react to you so let's get a bit more speed on hopefully before we get to this 40 zone I want it to react, otherwise we'll just have to wait till we get over 40. Yeah, we've got 31 now, 32. It'll give us a little bit of grace. Might let us up to 33. We'll see. 33. There we go. It's going to enforce me. So if I put my brakes into suppression and acknowledge, we should be able to just release the brakes now and just keep on driving. So it's very important to get the brakes into the suppression position so that they actually read suppression on the HUD. Alright, let's pick up speed again. That was of course a bit rough for our passengers. This is a non-stopping service going all the way to Lansdowne in 35 miles. Well that's okay. Now, you may not hear the alerter go off too often. If we can just go on up to maximum speed. But we've also got a limit of 40, so we're going to stick with 40.
Now the next thing I want to show you is how to recover from an emergency break. So let's just whack it and stop. So we put our throttle back to idle for a start. Wait for the train to come to a stop. Put our brake into the suppression position. You'll see it's starting to charge the brake system back up now. And we should be able to release the brakes and hopefully drive. It may take a little while to get moving because, of course, we dumped all the air out of the braking system. So it may take a little while to charge that back up again. We are starting to move forward, so we're able to drive. And if you look at the screen up here, you can see that we are actually making power up the other end of the train up there. And everything is good. We are going uphill, so let's get a bit more power on. Very quiet up here in the cab car, of course. Gradually picking up some more speed now as we head up the gradient. See the new suspension reacting to the points there. This one does have horn, normal horn, but over a, I think it's over 25 mile an hour. You've also got the sequencer. Too fast. Suppression, suppression. There we go. Gotcha. Ooh, not, not, not escape. Right. Okay, back off the brakes again. So you use the horn sequencer when you're going up towards a crossing. It just does the whole two short, two longs, a short and a long, for you. Rule fourteen L. I really must kill that key in, in my little box. I have a... I'm not sure if I can get this out here safely. Let's have a look. I have this magic thing called Box, which has uh, various keys programmed in it. It's basically a keyboard, and it's got the common keys that you use for the train simulator programmed into it. But uh, it does have an escape key in the middle for no readily apparent reason, and it pops me into pause mode. And if I accidentally press that instead of the acknowledge button, which is right below it, then, of course, bad things happen. Alright, now we are going downhill, so we're just going to give it a little bit of break, just to keep us under control, because we need to stay under the 40. Now up the other end, it will probably, I don't think it actually shows us on this graph, but it, it would after a while start producing some electro-pneumatic braking, but probably not with such a minor thing. We're allowed up to 55 now, so let's take it on. I'm not going to take this all the way down to Lansdowne in a tutorial. So what it might just do, let's have a quick look at the map. So we're heading down this way. Where is the next station? I think we should stop at it. That's because we can. Well, it's a long way away too. It doesn't seem to be a station for quite a long time. Well, scratch that idea. I'll show you how to do a normal service stop. Just up here on this corner then. That seems fine to me. Alrighty, so to do a normal service stop, let's just pretend we're coming into a station now. Let me just release the throttle back to idle. Pop on some brakes, depending on how fast you're going. See, the brakes are coming on now. Are we producing... Yeah, you can see what I mean here. We're starting to produce dynamic braking up at the locomotive at the other end. You can see it reduced the air pressure a little bit. It'll slow down. We'll get to the point where we're about to stop. Dynamic braking will cut out up there. At some point. There it goes. And you'll see the air pressure went back up a little bit. Alright, so that's a normal service stop. So now you can put on your holding brake. 
release the train brake and you know just in case we were doing a station stop you'd open and close the doors etc and power on to get out of here again and release the holding brake very good That's about all I really needed to show you for this one. Oh, I didn't show you shutting it down. I better show you that, didn't I? So put the throttle back to idle. Stop the train. Once the train stops, put the brake into the HO or handle off position. Hit cut out here. Change your reverser to key out. And we're done. You could turn your headlights back to dim if you were being nice and courteous. And then we'd hop out of the train and walk away. Try not to get run over, of course. And there we have it. The CTC5 cab car. Not particularly hard to drive at all. You'll notice you don't have to do anything with the gen switch or anything like that. It's all automatic. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. If you've got any questions, pop them down below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. It is a pretty easy one to drive. I personally, cab cars aren't really my thing because I like to hear the sound of the, the locomotive, but uh, that's just me. I know people love these things. so And they are half the route, basically, because going out to Worcester, you'll be driving the locomotive and coming back towards Boston, you'll be driving the cab car. Alrighty, that's it folks. Thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions, chuck them down below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Bye now.